Introduction to the Rectangular Metal Waveguide. We're not really going to analyze much here. I just want to introduce the metal waveguide at a high level, show some visualizations of guided modes, and then in later videos, we'll get on to the detailed analysis. Well, it's a rectangular pipe. So we will have metal, a very nice electrical conductor going all the way around the outside. And the inside will be filled with a dielectric of some sort. And for this analysis, we are assuming that that dielectric or the material fill is homogeneous. So we're not looking at the inhomogeneous case because then it would not support TE and TM modes to even analyze. And it will become a hybrid mode analysis. The other thing is the convention is that the width of the guide is longer than its height. So it's very rare to specify a rectangular waveguide where the height, this parameter B, would be greater than its width A. So the convention is that A is greater than B. Now, when we analyze this, this is a great waveguide to analyze after parallel plates because the rectangular waveguide is very much like two parallel plate capacitors. And I'm trying to visualize this on the right. So we have two parallel plates. One would confine vertically, the other would confine horizontally. If we overlap them, we get a little channel down the middle. And that is very much like our rectangular waveguide. And so when we analyze this, we're going to have that in mind. So it's a great waveguide to analyze right after analyzing parallel plate waveguides. Uh, almost all the concepts we discussed in parallel plates will arise again when we talk about a rectangular waveguide. Before we jump into the analysis, let's just go through some notes on the rectangular waveguide. It is probably the most classic example of a channel waveguide, and that's because it's very simple to analyze. Practically, it was one of the first waveguides used for microwave frequencies. As I mentioned, transmission lines above you know, 5 to 10 gigahertz or so, depending on what you're doing, become very lossy, and waveguides are the preferred way to pipe electromagnetic energy. Even at lower frequencies and at very high power, waveguides will be preferred. It's not a transmission line, and that's because it only has one conductor. This means it will not support a TEM mode, so we're not going to bother to try to analyze that for the rectangular waveguide. So, does not support a TEM mode. The TEM mode does not have a low frequency cutoff, whereas TE and TM modes do. That means there's a certain frequency below which this rectangular waveguide is completely useless. It is a paperweight, does not support any guided modes. And that's interesting about it. I know we haven't gone through the analysis yet, but here's a foreshadowing of where we're going. We're going to have TE and TM modes, of course. We will have two subscripts because now there's two dimensions. And what you'll see is each dimension here, X and Y, will both be sort of a parallel plate waveguide analysis. But it takes the form of a mode we're used to where there's this picture in the cross section. And this is the Z component of the electric field of that. And this picture does not change. It just accumulates phase and propagates through the waveguide. So this particular one is the easy component of what we will call the TM11 mode. This is the Z component of the magnetic field of what we will call the TE01 mode. Here's a summary of all the various equations. It's not really meant to be talked through in this video. It's more for you to download the notes and use as a resource. We would like to identify the overall lowest frequency mode, and this is what we will call the fundamental mode. We've been through a TE analysis, we've been through a TM analysis, and we discovered that they have the same equation for cutoff frequency. And so really, we can just look at the indices, and whichever has the lowest indices is going to have the lowest cutoff frequency. When we do that, we determine it is the TE10 mode that has the lowest cutoff frequency. Therefore, it is the TE10 mode that is the fundamental mode of the waveguide. 
So if we operate a rectangular waveguide and we shrink the size down so that it is single moded and only supports a single mode, that single mode will be the TE10 mode and we call this the dominant mode. Here's some key points from this lecture. So the rectangular waveguide, it's not a transmission line. We know that because it does not have two conductors. So it does not support a TEM mode because it's not a transmission line, but because we put a homogeneous dielectric in our guide, it does support TE and TM modes. If the dielectric were inhomogeneous, we couldn't do anything we've done here. We'd have to go back and do our hybrid mode analysis, which of course is much more difficult. And I don't even recommend doing that by hand, but it is much easier to do on a computer, in fact. The equations for the cutoff frequencies for T and TM modes are the same, and that's useful because we can calculate them at the same time. We found that the TE00 mode does not exist. For the TM modes, any time M is zero or any time that N is zero, none of those modes exist. We found that the TE10 is the dominant mode, and that's because it had the lowest cutoff frequency. Now the TM10 mode would have the same cutoff frequency, but remember the TM10 mode does not exist because that would have to have N equal to zero and that's not a valid choice for the TM modes. The other interesting thing that we keep saying is that the phase velocity of these modes routinely is exceeding the vacuum speed of light. And I hope by now that does bother people. And that is deserving of more explanation. And we're actually going to talk about that in a later lecture. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EM Possible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at EMPossible.net.